Hello and welcome to IABM TV. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Naveen Murphy, APAC Sales Manager at Skyline Communications, and Maslam Mahidi, CEO at MYTV. During this panel discussion, we're going to hear about a recent project where MYTV utilised data miner at the start of the Malaysian DDD T2 network deployment. And we're going to look at the challenges associated with this analog to digital migration. We're also going to delve deeper into each company's market segments and the impact that the current coronavirus pandemic has had on their companies. So with that, please welcome Maslan and Naveen. So thank you, Ben, um, and a special thanks to IBM for hosting us today. Uh, let me first start by introducing myself. I'm Naveen, the APEC Sales Manager for Skyline Communication. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time today, Skyline Communication is the global leading software and ICT publisher for open monitoring and orchestration platform. It's called DataMiner. Uh, we provide a complete end-to-end -end multi vendor network management and orchestration capability across uh, media and broadband industry. And that's, uh, that's where our general focus is. In essence, uh, DataMiner is very much committed to redefining the way how operators manage their complex ecosystem. Uh, with the idea that we want to provide easy and intuitive ways to manage this ecosystem in order to drive down operational costs, increase the quality of service, and drive your business forward. Um, the, the whole essence of it, you know, that you know, data miner generally pr enables uh, companies to really get that entire infrastructure into a single pane of glass. And that's, that's something that we do easily. Let it be hardware, software, on-prem, off-prem, cloud solutions, wherever your resources sit. We would be able to bring all of this into a single glass pane to enable uh, better management, easier decision-making towards your infra, your services, and also your business as well. And all of this, all of this is done not just in a reactive manner, but it's actually done in a proactive manner and, and, and that's done through the artificial intelligence engine, which is a core part of data miner today. Now, um, yeah, I think I'm going too deep into the product, but anyway, as an introduction, that's a little bit about data miner, but coming back to Skyline, Skyline is driven by uh, more than 300 ICT experts in the company, uh, purely focused on one solution. Again, it's called data miner. And we have representations across the world in many countries uh, with a HQ in Belgium and an office in Portugal, USA, and of course, uh, APAC focused office in Singapore. To date, um, just talking a little bit on our reach uh, in this domain of broadband and media industry across the world, we have more than 1000 customers using data miner in 125 countries. Uh, if I were to say there should be more than 6,000 systems and counting today, which has been successfully deployed and being used by this 1,000 customers. Um, some of those examples that I can pull off right on top of my head right now would be, um, let me try to go closer to home and say in the APAC, uh, there would be customers like Singtel, Globecast, uh, Encompass, MediaCorp from Singapore, um, then the guys from Tata Communications, Tata Sky, uh, Sony in India. We also would have, um, we also have TVRI, MNC, uh, Telcom in Indonesia, VTV in Vietnam, Telstra Media Hub, Broadcast Australia, um, ABC in Australia, and um, uh, customers like Cordia, Vodafone on the telco based uh, in New Zealand, Docomo Pacific, another telco based customer in Guam, uh, Signal TV uh, in Philippines, NHK, QVC in Japan, KTZ in Korea, and many, many more. The list just goes on. But not forgetting, uh, again, uh, we are here today to talk about MyTV. So MyTV is a Malaysian-based company. And uh, in Malaysia, we have Mirsat Astro, who's also a customer, along with MyTV, who is our long-standing customer, a valued customer of Skyline Communication, who has also recently awarded us with a system expansion a long-term contract to expand their existing data miner platform into a much larger domain and also expand the, uh, the, the entire contract with them for the next years to come through their managed services partner benchmark broadcast. Uh, we have today with us the CEO of MyTV Broadcasting, one of the pioneers uh, even before, who joined even before MyTV Broadcasting was formed as a company, uh, Mr. Maslan Mahdi. And uh, hello, Maslan. 
Thanks for hi, coming hi, today. Thank you for inviting me over. Yes, uh, it's our pleasure. And uh, as a start, could you give us some introduction to yourself, the company, and also the business that revolves in my TV? Okay, sure, sure. Okay, hi, hi all. My name is Mazlan Mahdi, and I'm currently the CEO of My TV Broadcasting. So, My TV Broadcasting has been chosen by the government of Malaysia uh, back in 2014 to be the sole operator of a Malaysian DTT network. So, <clears throat> DTT has been chosen. Specifically, uh, DVB-T2 has been chosen as the transmission protocol for Malaysia. Uh, and uh, we are, we, MyTV, uh, have been tasked to carry out, uh, to implement the, uh, the, the, the establishment of the end-to-end -end network for Malaysia. And uh, we, we are proud to say that our network is actually the, the, the biggest network in Southeast Asia, considering that we are the sole operator that operates all the DVB-T2 transmission in Peninsula Malaysia as well as Sabah and Sarawak. So, um, <clears throat> I have been uh, in my business since 2011, 2011. So, initially we started uh, on the business development of it. Uh, we will we engage uh, ourselves with all the broadcasters focusing on the migration of uh, analog transmission into digital. So in our engagement with uh, Malaysian broadcasters, uh, there was only a few of them. Uh, we talk about what will be the best way forward and what will be the key challenges because uh, previously in Malaysia, all the network were, all the transmission network were actually uh, managed uh, by the broadcasters themselves. So as part of the government's uh, initiative to enhance the, the content the quality of content for digital, um, they were in the opinion that the broadcasters should relieve themselves from, the, from managing the transmission network and pass it to a single entity uh, that looks into the, the uh, contribution and distribution of uh, digital TV transmission uh, for nationwide transmission. So, um, so my TV, um, our clients are mostly broadcasters. It's actually a, a, a requirement from the government for my TV to only work with licensed broadcasters in Asia. So um, they have to go through a process to acquire those licenses. And once they have, uh, uh, once they are they are granted the license, they can they can start to uh, communicate with my TV uh, in terms of uh, uh, using our our network. Uh, so, uh, so we are the access seeker and they shall be the access, sorry, we are the access provider and uh, we are licensing it mostly with the access seekers, uh, mainly the broadcasters. So <clears throat> the number of channels in analog was about seven channels, seven analog channels. And now we're proud to say that we have 15 new, uh, 15 digital TV channels uh, alongside uh, with five digital radio channels. Uh, it's all free to air format, uh, but it doesn't stop us from, um, from launching a, a paid services in the near future because as you know, DBBT2 um, with, uh, with uh, conditional access uh, on, on the devices can actually uh, carry out uh, encrypted services. So pay TV is something that we are looking uh, for as well in the near future. And our viewers are mostly <clears throat> Malaysian viewers in, in general. Uh, those who are uh, um, mostly on analog free to air transmission would likely uh, be interested in what we have uh, uh, in, from our network. Um, <clears throat> we are also um, helping the government as part of our CSR uh, initiative to deploy uh, 2 million set up box. Uh, to to the underserved population as part of, uh, to to enhance or or to to encourage more pick up uh, towards digital TV. So that has been our key initiative since uh, twenty fifteen, basically uh, to complete our end to end network to deploy two million set of boxes to Malaysian public uh, to migrate all the analog TV transmission from analog to digital. And now from 2020 onwards to look into new avenues or new products and services that the network can bring. So 
that's that's pretty much uh, where we are. And a bit of intro uh, on myself, uh, as well as uh, what my TV is all about. Thank you, Mazlan. So um, in this pretext, um, I think that was really insightful to understand uh, where my TV started, and also on you know the entire services that you're providing today and the demographics of your customers. Um, now. In this juncture, could I also try to understand um, what was the reason behind uh, my TV? What what drove my TV towards um, the need or or choosing data miner as the end to end network management platform? Okay, so um, part of the requirements from the broadcasters is uh, for it to be once it's digital, uh, basically uh, the network should be. Uh, Accountable, so to speak, and we have a, a, a our understanding of how the network behaves, or even uh, if there is some incidences that, uh, that is actually occurring on, on some part of the network, that we should be able to react to it and, and actually uh, ensure that the transmission is still ongoing. So, <clears throat> those are the, the key uh, challenges that uh, was tasked to us by the broadcasters. Uh, because the, the amount paid uh, on carriage fees to be on a network is, uh, is substantial for them. So in return, they would uh, request for a high level of uh, service level uh, from MyTV itself. So <clears throat> our network is quite expensive, you know, uh, expensive in the ways that it covers main simulation and uh, some other drawer. So there's only a few uh, solutions uh, that we looked into uh, that could actually uh, have a thorough bird's eye view of the network. Uh, and uh, we found out that data mining is one of it. Uh, in fact, uh, by, by the, the, uh, the response that we got from the industry uh, is, is actually one of the best in the world. So we don't mind paying a bit uh, as long as uh, we have a, a stable uh, solution for it, as well as a, a complete solution uh, that is useful to us uh, to, to address these challenges and also to, to, ex uh, to exceed the expectation of the broadcasters. So <clears throat> once the network is built uh, and we, we've got data miner into our network, um, it has been uh, quite easy in terms of reporting to the government, in terms of reporting to our clients, as well as uh, reporting to our shareholders and board of directors uh, on the status of uh, the health status of our network, uh, as well as uh, to to predict, uh, to foresee uh, what else can we look into uh, in the future, in the near future, you know, uh, to seek what whatever is relevant or whether there are areas that we should look into to enhance the performance, as well as uh, to, to increase the, the, uh, the assurance or the, the, the comfort uh, to, to our clients. So um, to ensure that we offer a reliable network to broadcasters, um, we need a bird's eye view uh, to our complete end-to-end -end network. And perhaps a, a we were look also looking into some proactive management uh, solutions uh, that could be put onto the network. So perhaps, um, Navi, can you elaborate further uh, how, based from these early requirements, how did you come into the picture and uh, you know, offer us such a wonderful uh, solution? Thank you, Maslan. Thank you for that. Uh, that was really, really nice to hear coming out from you uh, on, you know, the reasons behind why data miner was a pick for you guys. Now, yes, uh, everything that you have said is absolutely true. Uh, we do provide a great bird's eye view. Again, reiterating what I said earlier, um, let it be uh, hardware, software, on-premise, off-premise or cloud solutions, we would be able to integrate all of this into a single glass pane, providing you the entire complete architectural view of your infrastructure services and a business layer perspective as well. Now, this being that, you know, uh, my TV having this scattered domain or scattered kind of infrastructure, which is throughout the entire uh, Malaysia on uh, East and West Malaysia as well, which is now having the requirements of uh, needing management on top of this to enable 
um, a swift operation of uh, DTT in Malaysia. Now that is where proactive management becomes really useful uh, for my TV. And this, I do remember having some discussions uh, some time back on proactive management and the advantages that my TV has seen on this. Um, some of those things where it could minimize the uh, number of trucks being rolled out uh, mm. for services, uh, just because you would be able to predict this uh, way ahead before something goes wrong. You would be able to see and rectify it and not just act on a last minute uh, basis. So reactive management versus proactive management, proactive management always wins. Uh, you always win in terms of many, many aspects of it, not just commercially, but also in terms of maintaining uh, the uh, viewer's experience as well. So in data miner, uh, this, this, uh, this content of uh, pro proactive management is actually provided through our inbuilt artificial intelligence. Uh, which drives the data miner advanced analytics. Uh, it provides functionalities like um, forecasting, future forecasting, being able to uh, predict what is going to happen tomorrow, the next day, the next week, the next month, uh, depending on all of those information it has been collecting. So it's basically not just uh, forecasting based on moving average, but it's forecasting based on a lot of other algorithms in the background, which churns on, on a every second basis and gives a future prediction, which says this is how the signal should look like. And if, it's, if something is deviating from it, if something is deviating from the forecasted pattern, then data miner would actually drop a suggestion to you saying, hey, Mr. Operator, would you like to take a look at this? I don't think there is, you know, I think there is something wrong with this. Maybe you should pay some more attention on this one. So that's something that data miner could do for you, you know, and then of course, elaboratively provide you a, a advanced way of displaying trend indicators to enable a single view of your entire metrics and being able to look at, you know, if there is anything in trouble. And that's something that AI would be able to provide for you as well. And not only that, data miner AI also provides intelligent fault detection um, with functionalities like behavioral anomaly detections, configuration anomaly detections, proactive cat detections. This type of functionalities which would enable uh, you to identify incidents uh, or faults, which in a normal uh, layman way of monitoring uh, the operators would definitely miss them. Uh, a lot of incidents do happen. A lot of um, identifiers are actually put out there, but then it's always missed by the human eye uh, during the monitoring process. But for artificial intelligence, it could determine the difference in behaviors, the difference in uh, configurations, the difference uh, in uh, any kind of uh, any kind of change in a metric, so it could actually determine if that is something to be alerted or that is something which it can suppress in the background. Now that's part of it. Another another thing that data miner AI could do is also provide capabilities for incident analysis, understanding a particular incident and being able to tag it as uh, is it a group incident or is it a, is it an isolated incident. And, and from there, provide you a deep root cause analysis in terms of um, understanding where the problems originating from. And also, you know, we've went so far to, to the extent where um, nowadays, if you want to create correlation, a uh, rule-based correlation, now with data miner artificial intelligence, you might, might most possibly not need to do that because rule-based correlations change from time to time. You might uh, be able to use data mining artificial intelligence, which will smartly understand all of the uh, resources that it's managing and understand the properties behind these resources and know how to link them to one another and be able to identify if this is a grouped uh, incident or it's an isolated incident based on you know, all of these uh, properties in the background. Now this is called alarm grouping feature, which comes in data mining, it avoids the need for having hundreds of alarms flooding your alarm console when an incident happens, a, a high level incident like a signal cutoff or a power failure for the entire continent or something like that, you would be able to actually identify a lot more using this type of features. And of course, not forgetting the augmented operation part of data miner, uh, the capability for data miner to actually provide you assisted data analytics, adaptive dashboard contents, and also uh, functionalities, which today we are trying to move towards the collaboration environment where we want data miner to be able to interact with the customers. And that's something that we have successfully um, 
demonstrated today, and uh, it's something that we are we are moving ahead with. Um, things like having data miner integrated with uh, chat platforms like Microsoft Teams and Slack. So here today, you start having the capability of uh, interacting with data miner, chatting with data miner and saying, hey, data miner, could you show me this? Could you do that? Could you mask this alarm? Could you switch this to redundancy? Uh, could you show me what's the situation in London today? Could you show me what's the situation in Sabah or Sarawak? Now, mm -hmm. you could ask these questions to data miner. Data miner would be a part of uh, your team, a teammate, per se, who's working for you in, in, a, in a chat group uh, within Microsoft Teams or Slack. And that's something that your entire team would be able to take advantage of. And again, data miner artificial intelligence is a huge topic by itself. And to talk about it, um, we would need days uh, to complete that. But again, that's a little bit of overview on what data miner artificial intelligence and a bird's eye view could provide for you. So if, if I may add here, Navin, I think having reading about the developments that data mining has done there, I think that was one of the key uh, drive for my TV to look into extending the relationship that we have uh, to ensure that my TV is, you know, still has the best and uh, the best solution for network management. And uh, yeah, so um, I'm, I'm really eager for us uh, to, to actually uh, use and experience uh, what what data mining acts, for example, is all about, you know, in our day to day operation. Yep, that's something that we are looking forward to having in your environment pretty soon. <laughs> We're targeting to have data miner X uh, before end of this year to you. So um, anyway, you know, um, being cautious of the time, uh, just trying to move on to the next question. But again, Muslan, thank you very much for that insightful reply earlier for my question earlier. Now, um, also understanding that, uh, you know, in, in the environment uh, that we are looking at today, uh, we are, in, TV is always going to be TV and uh, people, there's always going to be viewers for that. Uh, but the idea now is that there is this new generation viewers which are emerging. And what is my TV's positioning towards this new generation viewers? And if I may say, what will be my TV's next action towards the strategic positioning uh, in order to tackle this new generation needs? Okay. Um, yes, uh, TV is ever evolving. Uh, my favorite tagline would be like, the future is still TV, but it's just not what we are used to when we were small kids, for example. So TV services itself have uh, had it evolved into uh, so many facets of technology uh, whereby for one, uh, you could see the distribution of multimedia content uh, is no longer along the path of linear TV over RF. It has now encroached into uh, distribution of multimedia content over smartphones, over IPTV, over cable. Uh, so we are always uh, in tune to, to these uh, global, cha global change eh? and, and the uh, media, media consumption change uh, from the viewers. So. <clears throat> Um, what is relevant to us now is, um, as you know, my TV is working closely with the government on uh, our future digital initiatives. So part of the request from the government is also to look into um, other mode of uh, distribution uh, and so uh, to take advantage of the converged uh, multimedia content uh, that we have nowadays. So, for example, we have started to complement our linear DTT service with HBB TV. That we have started that uh, since 2016. And we have received a, a very good uh, support from uh, RPM, our main uh, government broadcaster, as well as from Media Prima Berhad, who's actually, uh, who pioneered the initiative to provide HBB TV content. So moving on, we are also looking into uh, some other services like OTT services, uh, which is uh, relevant uh, you know, with the, the rise of the, uh, the Netflixes of the world. And so we are looking at that because that's actually a, a, a good way for us to encroach into smaller screens uh, uh, as part of our uh, viewing device, you know, the smartphones, the tablets, and whatnot. So we are working closely and uh, trying to develop uh, what is the best solution for, for Malaysia. 
uh, and also uh, that will benefit the viewers uh, in return and the broadcasters especially uh, in terms of them to, to look into ways to <clears throat> enhance their index, to enhance their reach, uh, to have uh, perhaps some targeted advertising. Um, there's also another initiative that we're working with the government. The government wants to have this uh, single currency of audience measurement, you know, something like a people meter. They want to know how many people are watching what at what time, you know, on what channel, on which platform. So these data are, are really important for the government, uh, for them to assess and gauge on, on their, their future roadmap. So we are working closely with the government on this, uh, on this uh, initiative, because as you know, uh, part, of our, uh, part of our initiative is the deployment of 2 million set-top boxes across Malaysia. Now, we were, we were a step ahead in this, whereby we, we have asked our manufacturer to provide probes uh, in those uh, devices uh, that could actually uh, provide uh, some return path data to us uh, to, to tell us what they're watching, you know, their viewing habits. And also we have uh, some, some demographic of who they are, uh, what's their, you know, where they are located at, and who, what's, uh, how many people are in their households. So we, if we combine these two and two together, we could have a, a more complete and accurate picture of nation viewers in general. So, <clears throat> um, they did, I'm sure it doesn't just stop there, you know. Uh, five years ago, we were we were not talking about OTT, and now in Malaysia, we're seriously talking about OTT. Um, so we need to find a middle path uh, that is uh, suitable to our our commercial uh, to our our commercial standing as well as what is uh, a likable feature that would uh, actually. Um, Ghana, the take up from the Malaysian viewers. So again, we're working closely with the government, working closely with the broadcasters in terms of our planning uh, a feasible roadmap for all of us. Uh, and uh, we are always uh, ever concerned about the, the uh, viewers, uh, how they consume the media. Um, so I, 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 I'm not sure, perhaps um, is this part of data miners uh, plan expansion or uh, plan of a roadmap as well. Uh, maybe you can uh, provide some insight here, Navi, uh, for, for how, of how relevant uh, are, these, uh, are these changes in, in the Malaysian uh, media landscape uh, to data miner uh, expansion of uh, services or products. Thank you, Maslan. That was uh, really a very well elaborated reply to the question earlier. Um, I think my TV, by now I can understand that my TV really has a very good uh, future vision in terms of how <laughs> it wishes to handle the market and tackle the market here. And you're absolutely right uh, in terms of, you know, having uh, uh, other uh, platforms like Netflix and everything coming into Malaysia and also uh, again, very varying it with the costing and everything and seeing what government of Malaysia could provide to those viewers uh, in, in this uh, scattered uh, demographic. I would say, uh, yes, it's a great plan that my TV has. And also to understand the behaviors of our customers as well. Um, mm -hmm. Now, that's something, again, talking about this too, uh, I think it boils down to OTT. And generally, OTT still boils down to a basic functionality that data miner could support. Uh, again, the core being that OTT infrastructure is something which is derived out of uh, what we call uh, on-prem and off-prem resources. Now, OTT is completely built out of uh, resources which are sitting uh, in, in, in somewhere where the content is being uh, created uh, on-prem and then in off-prem in the cloud with CDN and distribution base. Now, that's also, again, back to the forte of data miner. We are already doing a lot of this type of management for OTT. And that's something that we can greatly grow with MyTV uh, when the time being fit for you guys. On top of that, uh, data miner also provides a well-tailored suit for customer experience management. That's in line with what MyTV is thinking today. It's called EPM. Uh, it does experience performance management. Uh, now, 
EPM works by collecting data to understand the behavior and experience of a customer, irrespective of the type of platform intended, while connecting all of the scattered information uh, into a logical path in which you know information or service is being flowed. Uh, that being said, it means that you know uh, if you're collecting an information from one end customer, let's say a set of box or any form of device which is sitting in the end customer premise. Now, you not only have that information uh, about the customer's behavior or quality of service or a customer's experience, but then again, you would be able with EPM, you would be able to realize that entire service or signal flow right from their source to the destination. It enables a more intuitive way of managing each customer's uh, quality of service and expectations as well. So that's something that we can really do wonderfully with data miner and uh, and there is a lot more to this but again it will be a it will be a complete section by itself so i would uh, i think you know that that elaboration here would suffice that's good that's really good um i'm looking forward for to hear more uh technological uh developments or advancements that uh, data miner uh, will offer to us or, or to, that is that should that will benefit the nation viewers in general okay um, thank you very much Martin. Thank you. so uh yeah on my side i think i'm i'm uh, i'm pretty pretty happy with the way how uh, my tv is perceiving data miner in their day-to-day -day operation and how my tv is looking forward to the expansion okay. with uh, skyline and data miner so sure. uh, again uh, on behalf of skyline i Thank you for the continuous support and uh, oh, well, we look forward for a healthy partnership uh, in a long-term partnership with uh, my TV. Yes, and we thank you for all the support that you have uh, given to us, you know, despite uh, all the challenges that we face uh, before this. But uh, we look forward uh, for a, uh, a, a beneficial uh, uh, relationship in years to come. Well, well, thank you both very much for, for that fascinating insight into the project and your companies. It's always great to see how well companies and, uh, you know, their, and their customers can work together. So it's really interesting. So thank you very much for all of that insight. So finally, if I could just touch on the impact that the current coronavirus crisis has had on each of your companies. Um, Naveen, let's start with you. What has the impact been on Skyline Communications? Thank you, Ben. Um, well, it's, it's, a, it's a question that we can't live without nowadays everybody wants to know what the impact is but again uh, knowing that skyline is a ict company um, we are pretty used to being uh, to handle our projects remotely and uh, the lockdowns the initial lockdowns of this uh, pandemic uh, was little or no effect to us and it was work as usual in skyline uh, the huge upside to this entire pandemic. I mean, again, I'm not very happy to say that, but again, it is what it is. The huge upside is the market started realizing the importance of having um, a system like Data Miner, which enables a complete end-to-end -end, uh, architectural view uh, on the infrastructure, on their service, on their business layers, and something which enables uh, not only uh, monitoring and control, something which enables orchestration, uh, a thought, pro uh, thought process automation or workflow automation uh, in their environment, which can be managed remotely. So that kind of realization started coming in. And now more so, even though we are coming out of this pandemic and we are like here in, in Malaysia, we are in a recovery MCO, uh, our MCO uh, phase. But even that now we are coming out of this, I can see uh, more and more customers are really understanding the importance now that they want to prepare themselves in case there is another issue in the future that they need to face with. And um, we are seeing a lot of interest being churned out of this pandemic. Okay, and Mazdan, how about with my TV? How has the pandemic affected your company? Yes, uh, okay, since uh, the, the MCO uh, was ordered uh, to Malaysia in general, um, it puts us in a very, very tight spot. Uh, we have to ensure the transmission of DTT to Malaysia uh, is, is continuous and, and it's not disrupted in any way. So it, it puts us in a very, very uh, significant position. So <clears throat> because uh, we have a daily updates from the minister uh, that, that should be disseminated to all. So these daily updates are, are followed 
dearly by all Malaysians uh, because they need to know what's what's happening uh, uh, on the statistics, on on the next steps, on the precautionary uh, methods and whatnot. So uh, TV has been the the single source. Uh, of uh, where, where they seek all this information. So my TV as the sole operator of DTT for Malaysia, we carry a very, very huge responsibility to ensure that DTT's transmission is not disrupted in any way. Uh, operationally, we, we were challenged with this situation. Uh, so we had to cut the workforce down to at least 50%. Um, although we are all uh, considered as essential services in Malaysia, but we had to remain operational. So, but then again, new work systems uh, emerge out of, uh, out of MCO. Uh, for example, uh, remote management is something that we, uh, is, is highly uh, utilized. Um, and also uh, the communication method uh, that we carry through during the MCO uh, through online discussions, through Zoom, through what's that, uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, becoming a more uh, frequent solutions for us. Uh, as you know, uh, most of our vendors are attached, uh, are located in Singapore, some in India, some in UK, uh, Finland, you know, but we still need to communicate. So hence, uh, a new work system uh, emerged out of it, and we managed to to um, we managed to go through it uh, effectively, and we had no major disruptions to our network. Uh, thank God. So it's yeah, I, I agree with Navin. It's, uh, it's not really good to say that uh, you know something good is coming up uh, to us, uh, you know, throughout this pandemic, but. In reality, it is. Uh, it's a blessing in disguise for us. Uh, it's, a, it's a point for us to recheck on how we manage our network, on how we, we communicate uh, within uh, with our vendors, and also uh, to look into what, uh, what are the key services uh, that should be on this free-to-air platform and uh, to start to support uh, any initiatives uh, to bring them uh, on board. Well, both of you, thank you very much for joining us. It's been really interesting, and I really do appreciate you taking the time to speak to us today. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Muslan. Pleasure. Thank you, Naveen. Pleasure. Yeah.